Hi friends, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I wanted to talk about pricing your artwork today because it is almost October and it is getting to be craft fair season. Oh my goodness, where did the year go? Holy moly. So if you're like me, uh, you might do a couple craft fairs a year. Uh, maybe you're serious and you do craft fairs every weekend. I tend to just do one or two a year and um, gather up all the stuff that I've made throughout the year uh, during my tutorials and you know different projects I've made just for the heck of it and then I sell it and the question I get asked the most is how do you come up with prices for your artwork and that's really tough because well for one thing um, we're making stuff and we enjoy making stuff and so we may feel a little guilty for charging anybody for it because well, we're having fun making it. Doesn't seem fair, does it? You know, that we get to have fun and make money from it. But then, you know, we start to think, well, we've spent so much money on, on materials to make these, so, you know, it'd be nice to get our money back. But then, if you consider the time you spent in it, even though you enjoy yourself, you're still a skilled artisan, so you deserve to make money for your time. So that is probably the first and most um, straightforward way to price your crafts. Figure out what you want to make per hour and um, figure in your supplies and that should be the base price of your craft. So say um, a necklace took you an hour to make and you have five dollars worth of materials in it and if you want to pay yourself ten dollars an hour that's fifteen dollars. So that would be a base price for your necklace. Um, now there are other things to factor in though. Maybe you have to rent a space because you don't have room in your home to uh, have your art studio. So um, maybe you need to to divide the amount of uh, things you produce by the cost of your rent. So that might add to your overhead and add to your base price of your product. So once you get that all figured out, you're really not done yet because then you need to think about what will your market bear? So if all the necklaces at the craft fair that you're gonna sell at are going for $20, you could probably sell yours for $20. However, if most of the necklaces at your craft fair are going for $10, you may need to drop your price to below your base price. So it can be very, uh, very confusing. And you may even think, well, do I even wanna bother? That's kind of like losing money on that sale. So, you know, there are different ways you can look at it, but I think you definitely should get your materials and your labor out of your um, out of your crafts. Like for me, the money I make at the craft at craft fairs are completely extra. I might make a few things specifically for a craft fair, like my top sellers, like uh, you know chocolate covered pretzels or Santa s'mores or hand warmers, rice bags, those things that I know are going to sell right out. Um, but for the most part, they're my cards and my jewelry pieces that I just make for fun throughout the year that I do my tutorials on and whatnot. So anything I make on these crafts is kind of gravy. Um, but then again, I still want to also make sure that my prices are comparable with what other artisans are charging. So the best way to do that research is to look around, not only see what people are charging, but also see what's actually selling. Because you can, you know, ask $50 for a necklace, but you might not get that. Um, but it's also important that your prices reflect the value of your work. For instance, my niece had made this beautiful necklace. I was, I walked over to her house. I walked my dog past her house every day and I'd stop by to say hello. And uh, I saw this gorgeous necklace on her display. And I said, oh my goodness, I love that necklace. And she was, oh, well, it didn't sell. I had it at the last couple craft fairs. You can have it if you want. I said, oh no, I can't possibly. And I thought that, you know, it's probably a $45 necklace. I'm looking at all the beads. I'm looking at all the work. And I, so I picked it up and it looked $17. I said, are you kidding me? I'm like, here's 20 bucks, I'll take it. But I was, you know, my in my mind, I thought, well, I'm not, I wouldn't even look at the price because I thought it was really expensive and I couldn't justify buying that when I have so many beads myself. Um, so, you know, you gotta think about that. Think of the consumer. Think about what your price says to the consumer. So if somebody looked at that, um, if, they, if they're just going and looking at the price, that's probably not your best customer. If somebody goes and looks at that and admires it, and then looks at the price and sees that it's half of what they think it ought to be, that might raise some concerns. They might think, well, maybe it's made with cheap materials or maybe um, it was imported from China. You know, when I see a cheap price on something like that, that's the first thing I think is that it was purchased as craft fair filler, you know, because there are most jewelry catalogs, wholesale catalogs will sell filler so that you could fill up a table um, and make some money on some low quality imported things when, you know, to kind of make up for the time and expense you put into your handmade jewelry. I think it kind of cheapens a whole table when you do that, but some people um, think it makes the cheap stuff look better when it's next to your handmade stuff. I don't know. But, um, but so you want to make sure that your prices reflect your work and your materials that you've used. If you don't want to be just giving away your stuff and, and working for free. Um, 
you know, well, unless you just want to, you know, make your money back on materials, but I don't think that's a very um, sustainable plan because you have to pay for your table. You, if you want to continue doing this, you know, if somebody sees that necklace and they love it and they say, I'll take four more at, you know, $17 you may be working for free. You know, you might not even be able to buy your materials that cheaply again. So you have to consider what it's going to cost to rebuy your materials if you want to be in it for the long haul and uh, make sure you're paying yourself for your work. So that's just, you know, just some things to consider when you're pricing your work. Um, you have to consider, you know, what you need to make from it and also what your market will bear. If, you know, watercolors are selling for $30 at your local uh, in your local area, uh, you probably aren't going to get $75 for a matted watercolor. But if it's like tourist season and you're, you know, selling, you're painting um, specialized paintings that really appeal to, you know, a certain demographic where you're selling, you could probably get more for them than you could at, you know, a country craft fair. So, you know, just kind of knowing your audience, um, appreciating and respecting your time, um, getting the money back for your materials, and um, making sure you don't undercut yourself. I was at the Common Ground Fair last weekend and, um, they're very it's it's full of skilled artisans and we have a lot of native americans in our area and they have the beautiful baskets and i was looking at them and yeah they were 150 dollars but they and they were even showing you how they cut down the wood cut the thin slats of wood that they weave into these baskets and i saw somebody coming out of the tent saying oh those are expensive and i kind of wanted to walk up to them and ask what do you do for a living you know how much do you make an hour because i doubt they're making minimum wage per hour on what they're spending on their baskets. So you, you're you also part of an educator for your uh, for your customers. If you're doing pottery or ceramics, um, you know, explain how long things have to be fired. Explain the glazing process. Talk about your work. Um, they're go you're gonna engage your customers. They're gonna appreciate uh, what you're offering. They're gonna feel more pride in owning a piece of your artwork. And it's a conversation piece. So when they say, oh, I love that vase. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, I bought it from this artist who um, does Raku pottery. And do you know how they fire that? They dig a pit and they put put uh, dung in there and they fire and they set it on fire and they put the pottery in it and cover it up and you know they could talk about that whole process because now you have educated them and your work is more valuable now to them so you know there's just some tips to hopefully help you sell a little bit I don't um I don't get much of my income from sales I just kind of do it at the end of the year to kind of move on out my um huge stash of things that I've made that money is usually Christmas shopping money and uh, it's kind of you know gravy on top of you know just the regular regular income and it's and I do like getting out and meeting people and talking with other people about their uh, their projects and their crafts too but um, I hope that that maybe demystified a little bit of the craft fair pricing and sometimes you'll have stuff that you know it it's cute and you know you're pricing it fairly but for some reason people look at it but it just for some reason isn't moving and I recommend you know, trying it at a couple different times a year at a couple different craft fairs if it's still not moving um, what I do is I make a grab bag and these are really great around Christmas time because I'll make them for five or ten dollars I'll put in a couple pairs of earrings um, and I'll say like each grab bag is guaranteed to con to uh, to contain two pairs of earrings at a five dollar value plus other goodies and um, you know I put in those different things that I thought were great but just weren't selling for whatever reason it helps me keep my stash down clear off my table um you know I'll get my material get you know my materials money out of it usually but that's about it but it it helps move inventory and then people get a little surprised and they're you know they're getting more for their money and I think they really appreciate that I always sell it in my grab bags and it helps me um you know clear out maybe pa things that have packaging that might be a little shop worn or uh, but the product is fine maybe a little earring cards bent or something like that I just it just helps me clear out keep everything fresh and inspire me to keep making stuff because if you have a lot of inventory you can't move it does not really inspire you to make more so that's kind of how I stay inspired I like to kind of get it out clear it out and, uh, and start fresh every year as much as I can um, I hope this is helpful if you have any questions on pricing your crafts please leave them in the comments below I'll help you out if I can or if you are an artisan and you have some advice that you'd like to share I would love to hear it as would um, all my other subscribers and viewers too so please uh, leave your advice and experience in the comment section and uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and my other vlogs and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some other art marketing videos, click right over here. I will put a link to my art marketing video playlist. I'll also put it in the video description. And thank you so much for watching. As always, happy crafting.